This video is sponsored by Squarespace. For any aspiring content creators or business owners, Squarespace is the best way to carve out a space of your own online. Whether you're just starting out or managing an existing brand, Squarespace provides everything you need to create a beautiful website to engage with your audience, sell products, host content, and much more. With Squarespace, you don't need to be an expert at writing code. Simply select from dozens of pre-made flexible templates. Once you've found one to your liking, Squarespace's fluid engine allows you to customize your site as much or as little as you want. These are the tools I've been using to build a website for my production company Galaxy Class Pictures, which is almost ready to launch. And thanks to Squarespace's analytics tools, I'll be able to easily keep track of traffic once the site goes live. Follow the link in the description to start making your own website with your own domain name and use the promo code Rowan J. Coleman for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you once again to Squarespace for helping me keep the lights on over here. And now, on with the video. A wee while ago, I released this video about my opinions on where Star Trek Picard went wrong. To sum up my feelings, I essentially argued that instead of creating a new show about Picard embarking on, for example, archaeological adventures across the Star Trek galaxy, Star Trek Picard was essentially trying to contort itself into a revamped TNG without the elements which made TNG work. That is, until the show simply gave up in Season 3 and got the whole band back together for what was essentially TNG Season 8. However, looking at the comments underneath that video, there seemed to be a large number of people who stated that my Indiana Jones in Space TV show idea would no longer be a Star Trek show. Following characters outside of Starfleet on a non-Starfleet vessel just wouldn't be Star Trek anymore. I found this to be a pretty interesting claim, and so I wanted to entertain the question, does Star Trek need Starfleet? Or more specifically, does a Star Trek show need to take place on board a Starfleet vessel and follow Starfleet characters to be Star Trek? Now, there are many reasons why Star Trek has remained on Starfleet spaceships and space stations for so long. For one thing, a solid command structure helps define the relationships between the characters. Everyone has a clear purpose in each story's plot, which provides fertile ground for character growth. How will Sisko continue to be captain of the station while also being a single parent? How will Hoshi perform her duties as the ship's translator if she never finds her confidence? And so on. A clear command structure not only gives the characters something to do, but also provides the writers with a clear structure for character development. Secondly, following a crew on a ship also creates opportunities for plenty of action. The ship doing stuff is just cool, and it can only do the stuff because of its crew. The task of keeping the ship going gives everyone on the ship agency. The Enterprise can only beat the Borg if Riker gives the right orders, Geordi keeps the engines under control, Data's technical trickery works, and Worf fires phasers at the right time. There's tension and excitement and spectacle in the mere operation of a starship, and the best way to maximize that excitement is to either threaten the ship somehow or put an obstacle in its path. Hence, a Starfleet vessel has always been a great fit for this kind of action, because Starfleet is the organization which confronts the most threats and overcomes the most obstacles. Another strength of setting Star Trek aboard a naval vessel is that it allows Star Trek shows to spearhead the main themes engagingly and excitingly. Star Trek, after all, is ultimately about humanity on both a personal and societal level. In the Age of Sail, it was often said that ships were nations unto themselves. The crews of these ships were societies of their own, or rather, societies in miniature. Star Trek's adopting this idea has allowed its spaceship-based stories to effectively comment on wider societies, be they alien or our own, quickly and easily. Being aboard a spaceship lets Star Trek cut to the chase when it comes to exploring narrative themes and social commentary. But while this formula of staying within Starfleet has allowed Star Trek stories to comment on the human condition in a broad sense, there are many lingering questions about how Star Trek's utopian future actually functions. The post-scarcity, no-money thing is often a topic of fierce debate among Trekkies. This lack of specificity has led some fans to simply conclude that, while it's a nice idea, no advanced society can ever really function without money. Now, whatever your views are on this particular subject, this debate speaks to a core reason why Star Trek has remained popular for so long. Star Trek is inspiring. 
There is a long and documented history of Star Trek inspiring people to pursue scientific or creative professions. There are technologies which wouldn't exist if they weren't first depicted in Star Trek. But one of Star Trek's most inspiring elements has always been its vision of the future. Whereas so many other works of science fiction depicted dystopian worlds or worlds which suffer from similar problems we face today, Star Trek is one of the rare examples which suggests the future will be bright. And this is why I think taking Star Trek beyond Starfleet would be so powerful. Some of you may be familiar with the term capitalist realism, the idea that capitalism is the end point of economic development and there is no other viable model. Science fiction and fantasy settings can imagine all kinds of wondrous things and yet so many of them default to a free market capitalist society. Literary critic and philosopher Frederick Jameson famously said, it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism. Now, what one may think of capitalism or socialism or any other ism is not the point. This is just an example of a system many people today believe is harming society rather than helping it, of which there are many. Star Trek depicts a future in which human society has moved beyond many of these harmful systems. It is post-scarcity, post-feminist, fully democratic, and fully egalitarian. At least that's what's been implied over the various TV shows and movies. However, Star Trek's focus on following Starfleet crews on Starfleet ships has only ever given us a small glimpse of this bright future. What it's actually like to live in such a world has been left for fans to debate for decades. This is where a Star Trek show following non-Starfleet but Federation-based characters could be profoundly inspiring. Showing us what Star Trek's utopian world is like to live in can help us in imagining how our world can be improved. But what would such a show look like? Am I suggesting Paramount CBS Greenlight's Star Trek The Housing Association? No, of course not. But I think a series centered on a civilian perspective in some way could be fascinating. There's my idea following archaeologists in the Star Trek universe, but there are also books like Articles of the Federation, which is a kind of West Wing in space. The initial idea behind Deep Space Nine was about a Federation colony, and Roddenberry once proposed a spin-off following a Federation medical ship. The point is that we don't need to go too far from established Star Trek tropes to get a fuller picture of Star Trek's universe. I think a sci-fi political drama like Articles of the Federation would be a brilliant addition to the mythos. Our perception of modern day politics is often so cynical. Star Trek therefore would be the perfect place for a more optimistic take on the subject. Star Trek could also go full space western with a show about a new colony. How a community of people come together to build a society is the ideal platform to comment on modern society, which sometimes feels more divided than ever. Both concepts still leave plenty of room for episodic adventures and epic space opera stories which have been present in Star Trek since the beginning, just with a new twist. If Star Trek is to continue to inspire future generations, as it has done with past generations, that starts with a vision of the future. And by moving beyond Starfleet, that vision can be even more magnificent than it already is. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and share to stay up to date on all of my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, jump over to my Patreon where you can see videos early, uncut, and ad free. Speaking of which, I'd like to say thank you to all of my patrons and members now appearing on screen, with an ultra thanks to Tom, Dusk, Colin Camille, Patrick Fleming, Will Martin, Matthew Camille, Ed Mark Starr, Dylan Thomas, Lilac Yane, Howard Craig Akervik, and Kajing G. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.